I'm Rena Striegel. Welcome to Ag Inspo, the podcast that focuses on innovation and creativity in agriculture. In my travels across the U.S., my mind is blown by the farmers, ranchers, and business owners who are contributing to the richness of the agricultural landscape. My hope is that by sharing their stories, you will be inspired to have the courage to break through and bring an idea you have to life. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Ag Inspo. Today, I am thrilled to be able to get to speak to one of my favorite women in all the world. Her name is Louise Malika. She and her husband, Todd, and her family run a very thriving, uh, very diverse operation in Minnesota. And recently, she took a leap of faith and followed a passion project all the way to the end and launched a children's book based upon her farming operation. So without further ado, let's bring on Louise, because I'm excited for you to get to meet her today. Louise, it is so great that you were able to join us today for Ag Inspo, and I'm very excited for all of our listeners to get to know you and to hear some of the exciting things that are going on in your world. So before I start asking some questions, why don't you take just a few minutes and introduce yourself to our listeners, and then we'll start talking about the very exciting launch of your book. Well, hello, Rena. I'm I'm happy to be on your podcast this morning and a little bit about myself. I live in central Minnesota and um, have been in agriculture all my life. I grew up on in the dairy industry as a young child. I loved the cows. I loved, you know, being with them. And actually one at one point I even considered becoming a vet and, but went down a different direction and, um, just then we have got married and we have seven children and raised them up into the farming life. And we built a big business this way. And, um, yeah, dairy has been always my life. I managed our dairy still do to this day, but I have great people in charge right now. So I can step back a little bit. So yeah, um, I can give more details as we talk. <laughs> okay, so I, I, since I know a little bit about you, I'm actually going to like dig a couple kind of cool okay. facts out of what you just said. So first, tell our listeners where you got married. <laughs> in the hospital. <laughs> you got married in the hospital, because I think that is like one of the super cool parts of your story is that... Um, you guys were so ready to get married that you actually got married while you were in the hospital with an injury. Yes. And, and then, you know, started to pursue building your dairy, which then turned into a very robust, very diverse operation. So just kind of share with the listeners just a little bit about the scope, how like the businesses that you are currently running. Um, the different uh, sections. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we have the dairy and that's the hub, you could say. Um, from the dairy, we also have a pumping um, business where we go out and do lagoons for um, different dairies or even do um, uh, in the cities, we pump some of their stuff. And then um, we also have a custom part of the operation where we not only do our own custom chopping, we do, we go out and do thousands of acres of other people's, you know, uh, corn silage. And then we also go and we had a need for our own uh, wheat straw for our dairy. So we went out and it, it created a business for another business for ourselves. And that's how it always starts. We start doing something little because we need it. And then we just expanded to other people and it just seems to multiply but anyway we also go custom um bailing which we go almost to the well we go to the um canadian border and then out west 100 miles or so and so we start that in like the end of july all the way into september at times and yeah it just oh and we have a quarry which we have a you know we lot crush a lot of rock and stuff out of there. So it's just, I don't even know if I 
missed any of the businesses. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, as far as I know, you, you caught them all, but who knows what's getting cooked up in the office right now. Oh, right? Yeah. There might be another new business in the works as we speak. But, you know, I think that that's one of the cool things about, you know, what you just said, where you're, you're talking about, you know, we start because we need something and then we expand to serve others. And I, I hear you guys talk about that a lot about always providing value to other people. And I think that that has been like a really cool core value of, you know, how you guys live and how you guys interface with the world. And then I think that that really leads into, you know, some of the latest activity, which is you wrote and published a children's book. So tell me how that came about. And, and let's just talk a little bit about that because it's really, in my opinion, a truly just amazing feat that amidst all of this and working with family and a very large group of employees that somehow you have carved out time to do something really spectacular that I know a lot of people have aspirations to do. Well, I think in everybody, there's a book, you know, er, um, hidden inside them and they just don't know how to get it out. And for years, I have seen other people write books and it's like, okay, which path? And I, I've actually jotted down different things to write about, but it just never took off. And there's, there is a true meaning to do what you know how to do best. And so when, and I had tried to do different children's book about positive attitudes, positive, you know, thinking and stuff. But then this, I don't know, a couple years ago already, um, when I start thinking about it, um, and you were one of my inspirations as well, because I was, you as a friend, we were talking and you encouraged me to just sit down and write it. And um, yeah, I just took up a pen and start writing about what the happenings that go on in our operation at the dairy, because I know the dairy so well, um, was very easy for me to just write it out. And um, I took what I wrote, I actually, what it is, is my, the setting is two grandkids coming to Papa and Nana's farm. And then Nana and Papa show them around. And of course, I know that dairy, so it was a lot about that. And that's what the first book is about. But within my, my first writing, I had multiple, like the grandkids went here, they went to see how they chopped. They went, you know, there was a lot of stuff in it, mm -hmm. but then I chopped it down to make this one book. And so, and it just took off from there. I mean, I, you know, there's a lot that goes into just, the writing part was actually the easiest part for me. <laughs> that yeah. Part. Yeah. So talk about, you know, talk about the journey of getting a book published, because I know that there was a lot of paths that you could have take. You, you researched a lot of things. So talk a little bit about that journey for you. Well, um, after I had written the book, I had found an editor, a hometown editor that I worked with, and she was very good. She gave suggestions. So that part was, I was into, but the biggest thing was the publisher. I didn't know which route to take, you know, go to self-publish or, you know, there's so many, you click on, you, you research it and you Google it. And you, I think I inquired like three, four different ones. And um, it was like, okay, they, they offer this, but I don't know what it all means and what are you going to get in the end. So in the end, I did go with a vanity publisher. Um, and that is someone who publishes your book, but they don't really, they don't print it, you know? So um, that was my giant leap that I did for that, you know? And it, I did not want to, you know, cause I looked into self-publishing, but I did not want to go down that route for my first book. Cause I, I wanted help along the way um, to the action steps, you know, what to do. And, you know, cause it's a whole, whole new learning curve for for myself and um, so after looking at some of these other publishers, I went with a vanity publishing. And what that is again is um, they, they publish your book but they don't print it. So it's just 
then they send it to Amazon and it's print on demand. Mm -hmm. that, that has worked well, well for me, you know. So, and plus I keep all the royalties to myself. They don't take any of them. Whereas these other publishers that I had um, interviewed, they would keep some of the royalties for a certain, a certain amount of time, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, so you've written the book, you found your publisher, but it's a children's book. So there's illustration involved. So how did you navigate the illustration part of your book? Okay, so go back to 2019, my youngest daughter, Caitlin, who had just come, recently come out of college. Um, she, she was 19 and she was, we were talking and she was going, you know, trying to find her path. And I said, well, hey, well, she had gone to school for communication arts and design. And I said, well, I'm going to write a book. Do you want to illustrate it for me? She said, write the book and I'll illustrate it. <laughs> well, little did she know, I did, uh, three months later, I had it written. I showed it to her. So, so it was a real, so that's who I picked to do my illustration was my daughter. Um, and it was a big learning curve for her. First illustration she had done, you know, and if anybody knows anything about communication, arts and design, it's so a whole big broad spectrum of stuff that you do and so she loves photography and um she does all our photography and videoing on with the help of emily my daughter-in-law um on our our own business so but anyway she she um she's the one that illustrated it and there were you know she, like i said she had to find her her path and her her type of illustrations, and she's gotten so many compliments on my book of how she illustrated, you know, because she she she'd have to explain, but she manipulates the picture and she just you know takes it away. Yeah, I'd say. So you know, tell me why a children's book? Because you know, most like I I think you if you've got a book in you 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 have a desire to do one or the other. But I know from talking to you that you actually have adult books in your head. You've got children's ideas in your head. So, you know, what is, what is the, what was the importance of having your first book be a children's book to you? Well, I've always wanted to tell our story. What, what, what Todd and I have gone through and lived through our operation. And so I thought, well, why not tell it through the eyes of children. And plus right now in our life, we have grandkids, you know, 12 of them, the 13th one on the way. And um, uh, so I wanted to, I thought, why not tell it through the eyes of children and um, make it come alive and teach people, not only children, but adults, what really happens on the farm and where their food comes from. There's so many people, that, I mean, people are third generation removed from the farm and there's only like 2% of people living on in the agriculture world, you know? So a lot of people don't understand, you know, how, how, to, how where that milk comes from that they take off the to shelf or where the cheese, you know, is that, you know, cheese really comes from a cow and um, yeah. And, and so that was my thoughts of, of um, writing this book to teach. I love to teach. Yeah. So your love of teaching, I, I mean, you should tell that story too. Like you discovered your love of teaching through teaching who? Our seven children. We, um, I, <laughs> I homeschooled them from when, well, from baby up and a few of them went to um, post-secondary colleges, you know, but, uh, all the way through high school and every one of them have gone on to some type of trade or, or to college, you know, and, um, and found, a, you know, different paths. And out of the seven children, five of them are working in the operation today. And I mean, then that's including our youngest son who is um, in his first year of college post-secondary. So, and he's taking a whole trait, you know, um, at the college. So, um, so I mean that I even from when little, and it's amazing when you teach your kids. You have one, and you're teaching them, and how that one, they pick up on something. 
so much easier in the next one you you know they pick up on something else so, so kids just like adults are so different from each other so what fits for one doesn't fit for the other and it, it was just it's i always told my kids that i can't be president of the united states but i can set you up to be whatever you want to be you know and i just think of that as i don't have i mean i'm a teach i'm teaching them and, and through them they'll they'll be stars or wherever they want to go yeah i think that 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 each person learns in a different way is actually reflected really well in your children's book because you've got a very traditional children's book you know bright colors happy smiling people and then you also have included some technology in your book tell me a little bit about that yes um what it is it's called augmented reality and what it is technically is um it takes you um, you download an app on your phone, and you go over this marker that's on a page, and it brings up a video, and the video is actually um, one to two minutes of a of what what's happening on our farm. Like one of them is Todd and I walking with the grandkids throughout the dairies. Um, another one is feeding calves, so people can you know they they see the um book they read the book but that's all animated but then they can go into reality which is augmented reality right um and they can see the happenings that really happens on the farm you know and the feeding of the cows so i mean i think when i first decided to do it it was like that's the envision i had i wanted them people out there to see you know see what happens, you know? Yeah, I think that's really cool because there are some kids that are not going to be interested in sitting and reading a book or listening to a book be read, but I have yet to meet a kid that does not get totally enthralled by a video on a smartphone, right? Like the second the, the phones come out, every kid in the world somehow miraculously knows how to use it and what it does. So I think that's really cool that you included you know, not only the ability to to read a story to a child or to have a child, you know, have a very colorful, well done book, but then also to include a way that we can interface the real farm, the real Nana and Papa, the real cows that you're writing about into their world so that they can see it's not just a story in a book, but it's actually a real place. Yes, yes, I, I think and I think it's really made a difference in what my book entails versus another book. I'm not saying another book isn't as good, but it just brings out another, another niche or another way of bringing the, the, you could say the farm to the city, you know, mm -hmm. and let them, you know, see it, you know, and even I was out to see my grandkids a couple of weeks ago and there's a, she's three years old and all she could do is ask for my she wanted to watch cows, wanted to watch cows, you know, all the time. So, you know, that, and they get excited about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, I've, I've heard it say that kids really want to see themselves reflected in the things that are presented to them. So, you know, they want to see, even if you're a farm kid, you want to read stories about farm kids because you want to see yourself reflected in those stories. So I think it's really neat that you've gotten such a you know, positive response from the agricultural community, but then you also get this like brilliant and creative way of helping someone who may never get to come to a farm, never get to see a dairy like yours um, or ride in the cart or, you know, walk in the, in the field, but they can come to Nana and Papa's farm and get a sense of that through the story. I, I really think that that's brilliant and from an educational perspective. Yes. And it, I, and the, Children, it's not only children, adults are so, so amazed and, um, you know, cause it even, um, one of the people that I'm working with, with our publishing company, he gets excited. I mean, I think he's in his fifties. Oh, I'd like to come and, you know, visit your farm because of the augmented reality. We put it in it, yeah. you know, he's actually the, the one that we work with, with the augmented reality. So, yeah, that's awesome. So you know, the, the book has, you, you worked on it all last year and a little bit in 2019. 
it got launched this year in January. January 13th. Yeah. And what was the result of your launch? Because I think this is super cool. <gasps> um, in 24 hours, I got this back. 24 hours, I was bestseller. Another 24 hours. No, wait a minute. And it, it was the first day I was a bestseller. In 24 hours, I was an international bestseller. So yeah, that was that was exciting. I mean, I can't. I, I was, was speechless to what what to even to say about that because I never expected that at all. Yeah, yeah. So you know, that's I think another cool thing about this is not only are you pursuing a dream, right, and and pursuing a very big goal that you'd had in mind for many years before it actually became reality, but then the result of that activity was that you received, you know, a very big, you know, way to go from the universe in that you became bestseller and international bestseller in a very short amount of time. Tell me a little bit about, you know, in the, in the process of launching the book, what was actually the goal for the book? Like what were, what was your goal? My goal was to be a bestseller was, but, but to get the book out there, into the hands of children and adults to let them see what happens and teach them the happenings and the, where their food comes from. That was, that was my goal is to get it out there to into the, you know, into all, thing, all, all the households. That was my goal. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, in having that goal and then you obviously got, you know, a lot of affirmation for that goal, but mm -hmm. What was the, what was the funnest part of this process for you? Like what was, what was your, the things that you felt was, was really positive? What did you learn? You know, just tell us a little bit about the, the, the kind of cool things that happened as you went through this process with Caitlin. Um, you know, working with family is, can be trying. It can be, can be exciting. So there was both of that. I have to admit there was both of that because we, we wanted to, you know, it's like you have to put on your business hat when you're in business and, and but yeah, I want to be family. So, but in the end, it was really, I was really proud and, and happy that we could work together and that it, it turned out like it did. Mm -hmm. um, I was also, I pulled in, you could say on, on our team and our, in our business, my daughter-in-law, Emily is in marketing. And we pulled her in to help us keep things on par because she's she's a very good organizer and kudos to her. She could keep, you know, us on the path, you know, not that we couldn't have done it, but with her, I think that it was 100% better. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, what did I learn? I learned, I grew a lot. I, I learned a lot about the, the publishing and the the marketing was the biggest, you know, the biggest thing. Like the, like I said before, five percent is the writing the book. The other, other ninety-five percent is marketing it and getting it out there into the world and let you know. And don't stop, you know, you know, we don't want to stop just because you got it out there. It's not like everybody knows about it. So we're continuously um, promoting it. And what it does is also because in in that go back to the augmented reality, we have a link or it says learn more on it. So when you mm -hmm. click that, it goes to my website about the book, but also has a link to go to our business website, which is malikainc.com, and that you can actually see more videos, more learn more about you know the different segments of our operation. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you know. I think that that's a really great point that you just made about, you know, it's one thing to have a goal and to take the first step, which the first step is always like, once you decide what the first step is, it's really exciting, right? Because you're putting yeah. things into action, but then somewhere along the way, you are going to hit something that's challenging, whether it's, I don't, I'm not sure what publisher to pick, or my family is, is, you know, not on the same page as me. I mean, every big goal in life is going to have that part where it becomes hard. And, you know, I think that, that that's a really great, you know, advice from you in that, like having the idea and starting is the exciting part. And then you really got to go to work. 
Yeah. 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 Because start to finish, how long did this take? So from the idea of, I want to write a children's book to actually being published, how long of a time span was that for you? Oh, it was in, I think, December of 2019 that I wrote the book. And I published it here in, and the launch day was January 13, you know, because I wrote it and then it took a while for, because Caitlin had was, you know, doing her other stuff to her to get her illustrations done. And then for the marketing part before the launch. So, I mean, it took what a year, a good year to, to um, have it all, you know, worked up to, the end result of the launch. Okay, so, so and then I'm going to go back a little bit further. Where did you when did you start thinking about writing the book before you actually wrote the book? Well, there I get kind of a little bit mixed, you know, like, okay, did I start earlier? I would say in um, August is when I started thinking about this direct book. Mm -hmm. But I but actually when, actually it was you, um, why don't you just write it? When I put it, put it like me. It, huh? <laughs> like me, so simple, just write it, Louise. Yeah. And I think that was in November, because I'd have to go back to my notes. I think yeah. it was November, November but, but I had always, like somebody a long, I don't remember what year it was, told me, you should write a book. Meaning he had, he had talked to Todd. Todd, if anybody knows my husband, Todd, he's, he's an entrepreneur and he, he got ideas after ideas, you know, and that's why we're in a lot of these businesses because he, he has a good, what would you call it, Rena? He's it's very nice. visionary. Yes. <laughs> and so, um, so it's, you know, you got to keep up with him, right? But anyway, uh, so I don't even know where I was going here with this. It was uh, the idea was planted way back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had talked to this this other writer that we had was uh, see we had listened to, and he, he he my husband introduced him to me, and then he goes, "You should write a book," you know, because he had you know our our farming and then our homeschooling and stuff, and so that my that stuck in my mind a long time. I mean, full until I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. you know? So then I always struggled to write the story about our life. And I thought, how, oh, I'm sorry, right now I think, oh, how boring somebody wants to listen to my life. So when I came up with this idea, it was like, I like things fun. I like things um, exciting and short and sweet. So my book is not a lot of wordy stuff. It is very simple. And um, because with having children and sitting down and reading books, it's like, um, I always had to come up with my own words anyway, because mm -hmm. there's too much on a page. So my book is short <laughs> and I made it so that you could watch, read the top of the page, one sentence on top of the page and not have to read what's out down below. And for a child that wants to keep on moving with the book and then mm -hmm. read the rest of it, you read the rest of it. So mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I answered your question. No, that's well. awesome because I think, you know, I, I think that's, there's a lot in what you just said, you know, in terms of, you know, having a seed planted and then maybe taking some time for it to, you know, evolve and to form before you actually feel like you can execute on it. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, it's really easy to meet somebody and go, oh, you should do that. And we have people, you know, everybody in the world has somebody that thinks some, something that you're doing is cool enough to turn it into something. And sometimes it just takes a little bit to, to evolve and to find like the timing is correct. So uh -huh. I think it's really neat that you had a seed planted and then you actually were able to execute on it. But then also in that execution, in that year that it took you from, you know, a little bit over a year from actually having the concept, writing it, illustrating it, you also had a lot of strategy about what makes the book relevant to kids. So, you know, inserting the augmented reality, making sure that it was formatted in such a way that the story gets told for mm -hmm. a child, whether they really want to sit and, and read and look at the pictures 
or whether you've got somebody that just wants to get to the tractor <laughs> and they're flipping through it really fast to get to the tractor page. So, you know, I think that that's really cool that in that time that it took to get the book on the shelf, you put a lot of thought into what makes that very applicable to a child of any different kind of attention span that the book would be something that they could enjoy. And mm -hmm. I think that that's also really cool. And that leads kind of back to your teacher, you know, that, that you are a teacher at heart and you want things to be um, accessible. So yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah. And it was a little bit hard for me. They, you know, you had to put a like age limit, age on your book. And like, so I've got like six to eight, but it's like, okay, I've got so many grand grandkids younger than that, that want to sit and, you know, look at the book and, and that so that part was but you don't want to do a bride broad you know range but so i just only point that out because because of the attention that the book has you know received from just multiple ages right you know? right right so you know you you link a lot of things in in terms of your interest so you've got kind of a teacher's heart and that desire to educate you wrote a book to make the farm accessible to a lot of people and to help them understand where their food comes from. But then you've also got another passion, which is that you are a fitness and nutrition advocate. So how has your lifelong pursuit of, you know, understanding nutrition, I mean, you build good nutrition into the herd that you manage so that that milk is the highest quality milk it can possibly be. So your your love of nutrition has transcended even into your very healthy cows yeah, <laughs> who get yeah. the benefit of your passion for nutrition. So talk a little bit about how how that is also integrated into your desire to be an author. Oh, um, well, I guess, you know, for me, nutrition and fitness has always, always been exciting for me. I mean, I, I, I like to exercise every day. Some people think I'm crazy. <laughs> um, but I just feel it, it for my mindset, it makes a difference. And nutrition wise, see, I lost my mom at the age of 58. My grandma was at the age of 78. So then my sisters and I, when my mom passed away, we said, okay, does that mean we're going to pass away at 38? So and prior, a little bit prior to that, my sister and I were into nutrition already. But uh, so it really turned, and I'm 58 today. So when I turned 58, it just hit me that, you know, um, I'm as good and, you know, and healthy as I am and where my mom, you know, the path, but it doesn't matter. Just, it just reflected that. Mm -hmm. so I've always had that interest <clears throat> to, um, be nutritionally, you know, watch what I eat. And, and it's, you know, um, it's not, it's not always, you know, to be fit. And it's not always to be skinny. It's to be, you know, be able to have that stamina and strength and energy to continue. Um, I bring that into the, I like to bring that into the family too, but it's not like I'm saying you need to do this and you do that. I show by example mm -hmm. and it, whether they choose or not, but I, I want, you know, it was like back in 2012, we came upon a product and I just thought it was, and everybody has been on it and they're very adamant to taking it. And um, it's just a good fit for our family. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, you know, what were, you know, we talked about some of the highlights of being able to, you know, get a book into the marketplace. What were some of the biggest challenges for you? as a, you know, you are a full-time businesswoman, you are a full-time mom, you are a full-time grandma, because you do have a lot of little grandbabies running around because five of your kids are in the operation. Um, you know, you have got a lot going on. So what were some of the biggest challenges of diverting some of your time and talent into pursuing authorship? You almost had a, you have, you have to set a time, you have to make that time to do it. Um, and you have to find out what works for you, you know? So for me, it was um, to work on it, you know, early mornings or, 
um, in the morning time period because in the afternoon it just seems you know things go in different directions so to setting that time to diligently do it either every day or you know every second day and um, focus on it mm -hmm. so I guess that's that's what I did and then now with the marketing we have our with and that's what I would encourage everybody to do once they've launched the book that they keep on the marketing, have a marketing team behind you, have somebody that knows more than you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I lean a lot to Caitlin, she, she's good in it, and um, Emily, um, she, she's head of our marketing. And um, so we collaborate and say, okay, what we're gonna do now. And then to be out there in social media to make yourself presence known. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So what, what is the next step for you? Because um, you've, you've kind of alluded to the fact that there may be some other books that are in the works. So what, what are, what's the next step for you? What do you hope to do next? Well, I hope to write more books in the series. Um, I do have one about a calf. Pretty much it's written. It's got to be edited and fine-tuned. Um, was down, going down, I had my son, Jonathan, in the car, and we went to a, a road trip, and I questioned him about a different part of our operation, actually the bailing, and I got information from him to write about that, because I don't know as much about that as I do with the dairy side, so that's in the works. Um, I plan to do one on different segments of our dairy, our, our operation, you know, the chopping, the pumping, um, even the, you know, like where are, from our, when the milk leaves our operation goes, gets processed. I'd like to write something like, you know, how it gets made into cheese or butter or whatever. Yeah. How it gets from the cow to the store, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's really cool. Um, if, if people wanted to find out more about your books. And we're going to have all of this in the show notes. So people have the links, but where's the best place? Because I know you're selling now in a lot of different places. Where is your book available today? It's, um, available on amazon.com and, um, Barnes and Noble and indie, indie bound. And it's, um, porch light books mm -hmm. as well. So all those places, I mean, um, I, you're so, yeah, it, those, and then um, you can even, my, on my website, there's a link there, which my website is louisemolica.com, and right there is the um, link to buy the mm -hmm. book. And so, we also have an ag activity book out. I was going to just say, because Sorry. that's, that, yeah, there already is sort of the, the supplement, because, you know, you can't go to Amazon without getting a suggestion about buying another thing, right? So, what did you and Caitlin create to go along with going to Nana and Papa's farm? It's an activity book and it, um, it's a spinoff of the, the reading book and it just got different activities that the child can do. There's dot to dot, um, find the word, um, find the differences and coloring pages in it. And all the characters are related to what's in the book. So it's nice. So did you test that on all, on all the grandkids before you took it to publish it to make sure that it was? Um, we, we tested on one because she was always, I mean, Emily's a little girl. And I mean, she's a superstar when it comes to uh, coloring and doing all the activities. So mm -hmm. yeah, we did that. And we I brought a few pages out there when I went to Colorado to see our other daughter. So, so you yeah. know, I, I would love for you to sort of address, you know, it's sort of, it's sort of going in my head, you, you know, the, the process of writing a book, how easy it is to talk yourself out of it, you know, to say, oh, there's so many children books out there. Nobody will buy my book. Nobody will be interested in my point of view. Did you have any, any thoughts like that as you went through this process of like, how can I possibly make my book relevant in the world of children's books that is so competitive? Oh yes, I did. At first it was excitement. I, you know, got the only jam out there. Right. But as you're going through it and you're, you're actually working in it, 
more it's like it gets i don't know what you want to call it like not watered down but you you get so used to it that it, it, your mind starts playing with you that you know this is just another book and really is is anybody going to take a look at it is anybody going to buy it you know mm -hmm. um you know those those thoughts went into my head quite often yeah you know? Yeah, because I feel like that that's like a, a real common phenomena for anybody who, you know, is really good at one thing, but they have a uh, desire to do something else is that they can almost talk themselves out of it or get imposter syndrome or feel like, you know, I won't be as competitive here as I am in my world that I know so well. And I, I feel like that may stop people from actually doing what they feel driven to do. And I think that that's one of the things that we found is we've done lots of interviews with people in, in this podcast and in our other podcast is that every single entrepreneur that we have interviewed that has done something remarkable and really stepped out of their comfort zone mm -hmm. has really been able to differentiate themselves in industries that are already pretty crowded. So when you think about you know, writing more books, does that, does that thought ever go away for you? Or do you still sort of battle that in your head? The thoughts always there is just, um, I, sometimes I see that the, the time it took to do the first one, that is isn't going to be as much work for the next ones. <laughs> that thought was in my head, but the encouragement of the ex what I have to hold on to is the excitement that it brought me when it was published and the, um, and the outcome, you know, and you asked me before, what do I want from the book also is to tell our story and bring people to our website because we have a lot of things that we do and we want people out there to know that we, that we do them so we can help others because mm -hmm. we can serve others, you know, whether it's in failing pumping or whatever, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody's sitting out there going, well, that's all great, Louise, but it sounds like you have this marketing team that's helping you do all this stuff. And I don't have a daughter that illustrates and I don't have a daughter in law that is super organized and keeps everybody on task and make sure everybody's getting things done. So we hit our goal. What would you say to someone who's sitting there with the idea that, oh, I'd really love to do something like that? Or maybe they've got another idea in their head, but they, they feel like they don't have the resources and so maybe it's not possible. What would you say? What would you say to them as their coach? I would tell them, hold on to their dream, follow their beliefs. Um, and they're what, um, just because they don't have an illustrator as a daughter, there's a lot, plenty of illustrators out there. They just have to start searching. You know, every publisher has illustrators that can do it. Um, you just got to find the right one that works w well with you. Um, um, yeah, I would not take action and, and follow it until the end, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, there's always that little, little uh, negative Nelly that comes along and tries to take, pull that out of your head. But if it's a constant that keeps on pulling it, coming back into your, what, what, whatever it is, if it's totally, you know, creating something, for the industry, just keep on, if it keeps bringing it coming into your head, I would keep on pursuing it. That's know? awesome. That's awesome. Well, Louise, this has been a fabulous conversation. I, you know, I am so excited about the book. I mean, I bought one on launch day and had it sitting in my house and my nieces who are nine came over and one of them grabbed it off the shelf and sat right down and started reading it. And she goes, Aunt Rita, these pictures are so pretty. Yeah. And, you know, and she was nine. So she's actually older than your age demographic. And she was just thrilled by it. And I didn't even show her the augmented reality. She was just excited about the artwork and the story. So, you know, I, I do agree with you. I think that your book is, you know, exciting for all ages of people just because of its content. And it, it does have a different look to it. And, and of course the, the technology piece of it is super cool, super cool. So I'm excited to see where this journey is going to go for you. And I'm just thrilled that you could take the time to, to come and be on the podcast. And like I said, for all of our listeners, we are gonna have all of Louise's contact information, her websites, 
You can go out to their business website and see all of the videos that they're producing. They've got a YouTube channel and we'll make sure that we've got all of that available for you so you can keep up with Louise because I have a feeling there's going to be some other exciting things that are happening in her world very soon. So Louise, thank you again so much for joining us. I appreciate it so very much. Thank you, Rena. This is Rena Striggle, and you have been listening to Ag Inspo, the podcast. Please visit my website at tomorrowiscoming.com and find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you haven't yet, please go to iTunes and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. Join me next week for another inspirational episode where you will hear from another amazing entrepreneur who has had the courage to break through and bring an idea to life.